be working with the biceps femoris. Okay. Also, you have uh, the other two hamstrings. They come in and they make a play on the MCL and other ligaments of the knee. Right. So if you're having knee issues, you really want to look at hamstrings. What's going on with the quad? And then the adductor and how those guys are balanced, especially glute meat and the adductor. Right. Those guys have a relationship as well as the front and back of the leg. Right. You can think of the front, the back. They got to work together. Same thing with the side. Okay. Um, so in this position, I want to just teach you guys this first. We're working from the hip. So when I say reach forward and sit up more, we don't want to work from the spine. I want to work from my hip and my sits bones. So if you can imagine that I'm sitting on the ground right now and I'm reaching forward, so my ass is on the ground, uh, this is how I'm going to be sitting up on the floor. And I'm going to have you guys work more from the hamstring. The sits bones is going to reach towards the ceiling like a Corvette light. Okay? And those old Corvette lights that come up out. You're going to think about rotations. Sit bone rotates up. You're gonna to try to increase as much flexion as you can here. So, with that, right like this. So I'm trying to sit up more, right? You're gonna feel like, if you just sit here and like play with the sits bones, you're gonna feel tension in the hamstring, mm -hmm. right? So, we sit on the ground, we work with one leg at a time. So I'm gonna open up this leg slightly. This leg's not doing anything. From this position, my straight leg, I'm going to bring slightly toward my midline because this guy's at an angle, the biceps femoris. So I'm going to pick it in. I'm at an angle now so we can apply that to the tissue. And this is very important here. All right, I'm creating a rod of, of tension through my leg. So I'm internally rotating the leg. I'm going to push the knee into my finger like I'm trying to abduct, right? Like I'm trying to open the leg up, but it's not going to move. You're going to feel tension up here in the hip. If it cramps, it's fine. Now we're going mass, max internal rotation, push that knee out, toes to the opposite shoulder, and they reach away, pseudo-inversion. You're gonna feel a tension in the curious fascia here in the shin. All right, we pull that back, we sit up tall, hips are in one line. Now from here, I want you guys just to work from the sits bones, try to sit up more, I want you to feel that tension increase. Heel pushes out, toes back towards the face. Okay, now from this position, I'm going to sit up tall, externally rotate both hands, and I'm gonna reach. Now from here, I'm rotating towards the straight leg, belt buckle, everything rotates until my hand gets in line or slightly in line with that knee. Side hand's going to hold the ten, hold the torso up, I'm going to reach more so I'm crossing the fascial line and I'm sitting up. Breathe and reach. Three, two, one. Slowly relax. Did anyone not feel a stretch on the back of the leg? I'm feeling a lot. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So, first thing they look at for hip replacement is internal rotation, loss of internal rotation. When we sit down like this, I sit, boom, my pelvis opens up, counter mutation. Right? It's like a lady giving birth. Okay, so we need the pelvis to mutate to come back so we can sit up tall. So, internal rotation helps lock that hip joint. So, if you're internally rotating and you feel tight tension here, you need to increase that capability. Right? So, um, doing things like the pails rails, where I'm going into internal rotation, like passive lift-offs, right? Things like that, where I'm focusing on internal rotation. Um, and you can do that before you squat, anything like that. But uh, yeah, TFL, glute meat, glute min, uh, those guys control that internal rotation and abduction, okay? Uh, so like crab walks and things like that, um, you can add a bit of internal rotation as you step, right, to hit that glute meat. But you gotta be in hip flexion, right? Because if you're in extension, you have to externally rotate it. It's a fan, it does multiple different things to confuse it a little more, but um, okay, any questions on the hamstring? No? Okay. Let's uh, go other side, but let's partner up, okay? And you can use your leg to teach people how to sit up. Like if someone's sitting back, just use your leg and walk into them a bit. No, sit up, chest up. Start pushing them so that pelvis starts coming forward and they can just feel what's going on, okay? All right, so go ahead and get your, go ahead, uh, grab your partner. We'll get it popping. Let's see how this is. Yeah. But. <laughs> okay, I already forgot how to do it. Alright, that's all. Just gonna. 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 Yeah, and this is how you can tell yeah. that he's like okay, he's turning into the scratch right here. Uh, so we'll have uh, like when we do another posture, we have our hands there to make sure that these guys are. That's great. Keep your head forward. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, so you hold that, or you hold that, or you hold that, or you hold that, yeah, I'm gonna go up that mic and wait for you. Someone just hold it. Actually, be careful. Yeah. I feel like last time it was right like a month, I was just trying to do my hamstring. I don't know if I'm trying to exaggerate the turn too much or what, but. It's just like the pending on the pipe. Put your hand in place. Good. Because I, I did feel it like a little bit right here, but I don't know if I was doing a lot. Yeah, the one part that was. Confusing me is when he said push the knee out, mm -hmm. but it's the thing inwards because I feel like this one is a shift is not possible for me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. You feel tension where my fingers are? Definitely feel yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's great. So, along the fascial line that we're training, mm -hmm. there's multiple muscles going to be along that line, right? If that fascia is tight to line, it might be one muscle that affects the other muscle, and you might feel it somewhere else. Okay. Right? That's totally fine. Am I over exaggerating like something? Because I'm feeling like. So that's the curious fashion. Yeah. Yeah. So dude, you're just not like pulling into dorsiflex. You're not like, you can't dorsiflex. Okay. So when I have you coming through here and you're pulling back, like this is the curious fascia. This is like, totally we want this to be tight. Okay. This is what I look for. Okay. Right? So yeah, if you're feeling it there, you definitely have the tension there. Right? And then you want to try to work from the pelvis more and think about the six bones. Hold that rod, the rod reaches out. And now I'm reaching the six bones back, right? Heel comes out, sit bones sweep away to create that length, right? <laughs> Oh, now it's lighting up. Yeah. yeah. The rotation is very important. Pull the toes back. Push here more. Chest up. Good. Both hands reach out to me. Yeah. Rotate. Right there. Stop. Hand goes behind you. Hold that chest up. Push more. Push back. Good. I already have 99. I don't know. I was say. It's just going through every movement slowly. Today. So that's what I'm talking about the setup. It needs to be the same every time. So I sit up. I internally rotate. I push up. I pull the toes back. I hold. Now I come in and you're just going from each tension and holding. And if you feel the loss, like, oh shit, go back, recreate it, what the fuck did I do? All these things. I can like visualize it when you're talking about the the rod <laughs> felt it just through here and then as soon as you have me come up yep. a little bit, felt it like exactly it's crazy. It's a great job. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Does everyone feel good with that? Yeah. Yeah? Hamstring. Okay, very, like very important. That's a good one. My yeah. quad just it was just all quad. Yeah. Slightly <laughs> bend your knee. Yeah. So when you go through and you're like reaching sometimes, you can be contracting a lot from here. Think about slight bend, pull the toes back more, and then work from that hip. It's easy. If you have people that are like super mobile and they're like, oh, this shit's easy, they're like in the position. No, you gotta have them create, tuck here, do this, boom. They're also like, oh shit, like I can't move. Right? Um, yeah. Don't be scared to get your hands up people. Right. You get a better result. You felt that in the hamstring? Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> last little one here, pectineus. Most of the adductors come here to the leg. Right, this guy comes, literally comes from cross, right? So it can, it can inflare, cause inflare and outflare of the pelvis. And it's a very hard one to stretch. So this position kind of sucks. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to get into it properly. So I wanna take a big step to the side. The reason why I need to do that is I need to get my knee outside of my hip to get my back foot flat on the floor, okay? And what I mean by that, so I'm going to step to the side, I'm going to try to keep my heel and my down knee in one line. Inside foot flat to the ground. I'm going to try to have my hips in one line. Chest is up, starting position. 
So I push the knee in the floor, the inside of that foot's pushing the ground. If you guys lose that, you'll lose tension here. And you can play with it. You can push the floor, tension, no tension, push, push. So I'm tucking, I'm up tall, and now I'm thinking about moving the pelvis away from the down knee, but I'm not dropping. I'm staying nice and tight, and I'm just tucking and driving. Think it's sweeping this knee away, you're gonna feel tension in the band straight across here. Okay? So try to keep your hips parallel to the ground. Yeah, but this time, most of the time, when you drop, people will go, the hip hinge. Instead of moving, translate, they'll go, right? So make sure you just keep the hips in one line and shift them. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't use it. Take a picture. So you guys look. Uh, looking for that? No. Uh, 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 so guys, that front leg, so we want the toes forward. You're back. Right? If we open up the toes, the pelvis will open up. So we keep the toes forward to keep that pelvis straight. Okay. Good. Try to put your foot and push directly underneath your knee. So the left. Parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. Once you guys are in that position, both hands reach. <coughs> Externally rotate, reach and hold. Chin's tucked, triple chin position, and we're reaching up into the ceiling with the crown of the head. Hands are in line with the shoulders. Straight out like you're doing bench press. Woo! You want to be high, dude. Yeah, pull those wrists back. Really Three. Two, one, slowly relax. Man, Chris, you're doing good right now, man. It's good stuff. Gumby. It's good stuff, man. That's so rad, though. So, that guy right there, very tense for a lot of people, okay, to be in that position. So, um, quick, when you're, when you're doing the clients, don't have them sitting down there like I do with you guys. Because right, when you're with one on one, it's easier. When you're with the class and you're trying to educate, you might have people a minute, minute, minute. All right. So, if you guys need to come out of the stretch before I call it, please do. All right, just you don't need to hold on for dear life. Just come out slowly. Okay. okay my shit's about to cramp. Other, <laughs> other side. So when you get a cramp in the hamstring, it's a neurological confusion because it's like, whoa, I'm never in this position. He's asking me to produce force. Mm -hmm. So then you're just training. Go into the cramp. Isometrically train it. Breathe it. Breathe it out. It'll disappear. All right. Other side. Take that big step out. Move your foot back just a bit. Towards, like, yeah, think about heel and line with this knee and then out. Okay. So. Now, yeah, good. Now move the right leg out. There you go. Good. Inside foot's flat to that ground. Good. Make sure you guys are rotating that foot and pushing that inside ankle into the floor. Good. Chest is up. Hips are in one line. Good. Reach out. Externally rotate. Think about Spider-Man, right? He's got those wrists back. Really good stuff. I think my heart got like in the 99 just now. Oh, I want you guys to like pay attention to how you feel after. Like when you get up, light. Because, yeah, it's light, dude. It's crazy. You feel you feel good, right? Uh, you sit for a long time, you feel heavy, right? There's no spring to the tension. The fascia changes immediately, dude. If I put my hands on you, that fascia is going to change. That's why when you go get a bad massage, the next day you're sore as shit and you feel like ass. It's because massage, like, if you look at fascial lines, when you apply tension along those lines, you get a result. So if I go along the line, let's say it lines this way, and I'm pushing this way, well, no, I'm fucking the fibers up. I'm gonna be pushing in a different direction. There's not a lot of people that really know how to do body work. It's very rare that you find someone that's really good. So it's, it's important to make this realization that as you move more and as you activate the tension actively, the fascia is gonna change composition. You're gonna get more of an elastic result, right? More spring and more bounce lighter mm -hmm. okay so now that we kind of worked the stretches to get the structures in line right now we're going to do the postures okay with the postures couple things straight spine is key that's what we're working for all the hands and the legs i don't care about right it adds tension to the system so i need to work with a straight spine first okay and so for instance like let's say i'm super tight and I'm trying to get into a position here this is where props are going to come in Right, you guys need to think. 
and I'm rounded. Like, what can I do to get out of this rounded position if I can't sit up? What's something that I can do? Uh, put a block uh, behind here, like a or shit. You're like, what if I can't? What if you can't physically push me? Like I'm stuck here. Like, I'm just I'm immobile. Wall. That's a great one. Put a block under me. Mm. Right, raise me up because mm. I'm so tight here. Like if I raise up. Like we get you get me sitting here now. Oh. Boom. Straight spine. And over time, as they work, right, we get a result. We're trying to work with their spine. Right? So the straight spine, we get axial extension, we get them working and reaching, decoapting, important. And over time we take, I, I have clients I've never taken the box off. They can't sit up on the floor. That's fine. It's like a person that has bad uh, biomechanics for a deadlift. You put them up on an elevated one. Maybe over time they get a little more hip flexion and they can control their spine a little more, they can go lower. Right? But we, we're just trying to create a profile for the person that's best for them. Okay? You do the same thing in exercise. If someone, they incline press and they hurt their shoulders, we can try to figure out what's going on. We can drop the angle a bit. Oh, my shoulder feels better. Okay. They don't have stability that high in flexion. It's okay, we can train that. But if we want to get a better result, there's other things that we can do, right? So I want you guys to just constantly be thinking about how can I change the profile of this exercise to meet my client's needs, okay? Big one in training. I think one big thing that we get, and just from, we have a lot of people work office. Or yeah. You have a lot of texting. Yeah. You make them do a press and they're. Yes. Yeah. It's like rotate the elbow mm -hmm. and there's just no way possible that guy's going to turn and they press and they're pressing outward. Yep. So how do we. Great question, dude. So thoracic <laughs> mobility, right? Obviously we want to increase the last stretch and being able to go through thoracic extension. Yeah, yeah. But with upper cross syndrome, okay, the muscles that are weak, mid and low traps. Right, so we want to be able to bring the shoulder blade back down, serratus anterior as well. Okay, so serratus anterior pulls like protraction, pulls the shoulder blades around the torso. So when I'm up into upper cross, I've got traps high, elevator is tight, pecs are tight, biceps tendon, all this stuff. Okay, so I need to go retraction, depression, thoracic extension, and train those muscles that go down, even lats. Mm -hmm. Right, so really teaching your clients how to activate their lats because in a press, you got to have your lats activated. Right, people don't understand that. They're here, right? You get to talk about going to push away, but no, I want to push and push back and pushing back. Yeah. So this has been a struggle for me for, for years, dude, um, mm. the, the shoulders. You need to train both, like what? external rotation, external rotation, physical therapy. You need internal rotation, okay? You need to train internal rotation, you need to train both. They need to have a functional shoulder. When we think about movement quality, I have a ball inside of the, uh, the glenohumeral joint, and it's going around. As I get tight, it doesn't have that much movement, so it's constantly scraping the same way. We don't have movement variability. So let's say I have a lot of movement variability, I'm very into mobility. When I walk, now my femur is hitting a different spot every time. Variability, right? Instead of, now I'm walking, it's grinding the same groove, right? So people are squatting in bad form over time. Those are kind of things that can happen, right? Um, you guys can work on, I'm sure you guys know this exercise, but Getting along the wall. Mm. Elbows, again, chin tuck, we're gonna try to extend and open up and wherever they can get, just have them drive back isometrically and hold that. And then, okay, hold, drive like I'm driving back and then reach up wherever they go, if that's it, you know, if they can go all the way up, that's fine. Making sure they're not flaring, right? Cause we're working on the extension. If they're flaring and they're moving the structure, I'm not stretching, right? You can also do this, I'm a big fan of this guy here. So hands up, I'm gonna externally rotate. So get my elbow creases in line with my thumbs. And then I'm gonna just pull back and drive my sternum to the floor. Mm -hmm. Opening up the chest, going through thoracic extension. Yeah, and we have them work from the sternum. All right, so we think sternum to the floor, shoulder blades back and down. And so, and then stability with the shoulders, right? They're, they're, they're really free, they have a lot of movement. Um, you can start them off on bands, push-ups, right? Close chain, obviously you're gonna have more uh, internal force. Um, you can get them pushing with bands, dumbbells, single arm, just get them, you know, high reps, 10 to 12 reps to stabilize them. And then from there, you can take them into a barbell press and stuff like that, okay? But I don't, I don't know if you guys know this, elbows should not be in line with your shoulders when you're pressing, it's horrible. Okay, shoulder blades back and down, slightly tuck because I'm in a neutral position here. 
Yeah. Right, so I'm still here. It's like if you look at like overhead press, boom, bench press, boom. All right, my hands are here. I get that stretch and I'm pushing from here. A lot of people, they want to, it's a very, like, if you can, like, there, I know people that press like that, right? But if you have a person with shoulder issues, you need to teach them from a more neutral position. And over time, as like I said, they gain awareness and mobility, then they can press like that, like bodybuilders and things. Like you can get, train these different fibers because you have that knowledge and you have that awareness, right? With your clients that don't, they need to be from a neutral standpoint and then progress. Um, dude, I've messed my shoulder up for years pressing. For the past three years, it's the first time that I've able, been able to go through strength phases for a long time. So, um, working with that, the posture, uh, those stretches, and just cueing external rotation. Like, the press is very weird as well. It's not a straight up and down movement, right? So when I'm pressing, I bring the bar slightly down to my to my line, and I'm slightly pushing back. It's a seed motion. It's, you have these people straight up and down. I mean, I'm not gonna say movement's bad because it's just are you prepared for the movement, but it's pushing slightly back and you're pushing into the floor without coming here, mm -hmm. right? So it's that roll down. I'm loading the lat, so it's like I'm rowing the bar in, right? I'm not like boom strong, push, right? Um, and over time, dude, like you have a little bit of extent, uh, external rotation, you have a little bit of internal rotation as you push as well, right? So making sure the shoulder is moving, uh, you can take them through shoulder cars. Right, shoulder circle uh, before they press. Just opening up and expanding that range. Right. Going through no. internal rotation, Sorry. external rotation. Get, that's a lot here. With the shoulder blade and the shoulder need to work together. It's called scapular humeral rhythm. If they don't move, we're we're gonna get a, a horrible uh, movement. She's so a lot of people that pick up stuff like this. They're not using their shoulder. As you lift, you get to about 60 degrees. The shoulder blade needs to open up. Right, because now it's presenting, if you think about, it's presenting the head of the, of the humerus up so it can now lift. Right, but if it stays down, now I'm crunching the inside, right? So as you come up, shoulder blade goes whoop, into the back pocket, same thing, back down, right, away from the ear. And so getting that movement as well is going to help a lot, okay? Most important joints of the shoulder, SCC, and then the joint scapula thoracic joint. It's just where the scapula and the thoracic meet. But that's fascial, so they need to slide. That's why those two are so important. Right? They move the shoulder a lot. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Shoulder. A lot of stuff on that. A lot of that. Um, 